Hello and welcome back to Boring Dead Gaming, where today we're going to be playing some more Opus, Echo of Starsong. Um, well, where we left off in the last episode, we uh, it was a bit of an emotional one as we, we lost Kay, succumbed to his wounds after fighting the uh, bounty hunter assassin who was after us, and uh, yeah, we're going to pick up straight away where we left off. Right, so we've got a couple of messages here. Let's have a, a quick check of those. Dr. Russell, don't tell anyone I did this for you. Th uh, okay, I think this is probably what we sent to them. Uh, this is my fault. I want to do what I can to help, so you won't be going back to Guifang for now. It's a shame, but you don't need to feel sorry for the Ocean and Noble. As for those medicinal herbs you found, you'll be able to find somewhere to sell them. Bounty's still out on you. Be careful. From Dr. Russell. Now, Remy's got a couple here as well. Uh, let's have a look. Encrypted. Re Eddie's lost it. She wants to find somewhere to launch a space burial. Remy, it appears you need me as much as I need you, smiley face. You're all really making a mess out there, aren't you? Come on, how do you expect to find someone to launch a casket when you've got a bounty out on you? Don't be mad at Ada. Maybe it's a sign that now's the time for us to be together. Come to my side and I'll tell you where to find a burial service. Your love, Benzel, Intel Broker, Heart Emoji. Okay. <laughs> uh, and something else here. Uh, I, I follow up to the last one, I, I guess. Die. Is that what we sent to them? Jokes aside, you really love you already, huh? Alright, I'll tell you. But will you come and have a drink with me already? Head to the infamous Silk Oasis, the Black Market Bazaar. That's the main stomping grounds for the Mirian Ignis Guild. Shouldn't be too far from you guys. There's a merchant there named Lamar, but you've got to be careful. They ain't friendly like me. Still, if you bring up my name, they should be willing to help. The most popular guy around, Benzel. Intel broker, heart emoji. I think he's uh, he must be teasing Remy with this uh, heart emoji stuff, but he's given us some coordinates that we can use for the Silk Oasis. I was really grateful to Benzel, but I was young, and it was hard for me to accept that as an exile, I couldn't handle everything myself. So we go back. I imagine that we're going to head off now to here, probably. I don't think we can kind of just go off on our... Or can we? Can we go off on our own? Let's have a look at this abnormal signal. Can we do anything with that? No, we can't. So I suspect we've we've got to follow the path. So here we go. Age no longer and here forever rest. Loom and War Memorial, okay? I know up to now I've been reading the unvoiced um, subtitles, but I'm not, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop that. I'm just gonna let you read them. Hmm, compose as a civilian ship or charge through, uh, which would mean shedding armour plates. Um, but we can choose this one. Uh, it's, it's a d10 roll, effectively, if you're a role-playing game player. From what I remember, the communications officer seemed confused about his mistake, so they just decided to let us go. And we succeeded in the roll. War Memorial. First year of the Lumen War. Unhappy with United, <laughs> with United Mining's interference in mining rights, local Pika factions from the asteroid belt clashed with United Mining. The ruins of this conflict was purchased by the Lumen Association and turned into a memorial for the deceased. 
So again, we'll work through these kind of more information flags before we get to the main area. If you have any relatives that haven't been found, you can register them here and the Foundation will help you locate them. The voice of the veteran we spoke to sounded very mechanical. He used a speech device which was much like Ada's, but it was much older. Most of the workers here were veterans fitted with bionic prostheses who returned after the war to live out their lives. We'll give some money. I know we don't have a lot, but we've got some stuff to sell now, I think. I was in a bad place at the time. Whenever there was some way to help the crew, I put everything into it. It made me feel like I was still able to hold on to my pride. The administrator was pleasantly surprised with my work, and he compensated us fairly. Oh, we just, just made the roll. So we obtained common lumen coins. Okay. By the light of Ignis, may your fortune shine upon us and cast away the darkness. In areas outside of United Mining's jurisdiction, many peakers refuse to use their currency. Instead, they use coins produced by the Myrian Ignis Guild, which were forged with trace amounts of lumen alloy. Right, Memorial Cabin. This ship was the main stronghold in the fight against United Mining. After the war was lost, it became a memorial for those who had fallen. Upon entering the massive cabin, the relics of warriors could be seen filling every inch of the vessel. A committee formed by retired soldiers would lead guests into the main hall and softly recount the story of the deceased. I don't think we do, have we? Oh, expend armor plates. Oh, sorry, I thought it meant uh, the damaged armor plates that we, we could also stock up on. Yeah, we'll give them two of our armor plates. I remember him reaching out with his bionic arm to express his thanks to Ada. She said that even though it was cold to the touch, she could still feel the warmth. Here, take this. He offered us a book saying only that it contained the memories of his brothers. And we've obtained reflections on the Lumen War. Initially, all I wanted was to fight for the rights of Thousand Peaks. That was until the fleet of witches destroyed our cave. This book was popular in the asteroid belt for a long time, and it was written by one of the founders of the Lumen War Relief Foundation, a veteran mercenary that participated in a lot of guerrilla warfare. All he wanted now was peace. OK, then we're going to the Lumen Association branch. Uh, the association acted as the runner's guardian, with branches spread out among the peaks. They periodically purchased Lumen products, provided legal loans and rented ships, much like the seafaring guild guilds uh, from the Age of Myths. <laughs> yeah, we found quite a few. So let's sell goods first, as we're a little on cash. Uh, we've got... Nine lumen shards, which I think sell for 60 each or 60 altogether. I'm not sure. So, um, oh, yeah, we'd sell them for 50 each. So, 60 each. Let's do that. Uh, lumen coins we can sell for 50 each. We got 16 of those. So, uh, yeah, sell all those. The potted lilacs are 180 each. Yeah, we got four of those. So yeah, we'll sell those. And the snowy sun herb. As well, 220 each. Wow, yeah. So 3,000 uh, credits now, which isn't bad at all. Let's see what they got to buy. Uh, well, we'll fill up on fuel. Uh, we could re-top up our armor plates again. And we'll top up our exploration kits as well. There. So overall, not doing bad for cash. I guess we leave. Um, there's nothing else to do here, so... Where shall we go? Is there something? Oh, we've been there. Is it... Is this where he was saying we should go? Uh, not sure. 
Have we been there? No, that, yeah, we have, because we said we wouldn't go back to Guifeng, didn't we? Um, can we go here? Solar alerting post. Oh, hang on. If we press S, we've got some the coordinates. That's it. That's what we want. So let's, uh, yeah, let's look for this place. It's down here. Yeah, yeah, I found that. Don't worry. It's going to cost us seven to get here. Okay, maybe we have to build our way up to it. Let's have a look at this. City stronghold, Saraswati. This city was previously a Ring Liberation Front stronghold. It was destroyed by United Mining during the Lumen War. Collapse as a common, so please do not attempt ex excavation. Uh, okay. More pirates are back. Uh, yeah, let's try and trick it. Got a 50-50 chance. The boarding vessel received the mothership's docking signal at the same time we sent them a signal prohibiting them from docking. While they were trying to figure out what was going on, Red Chamber spread away, spread, uh, sped away. Oh, we're doing quite well on those rolls at the moment. The Ring Liberation Front was a local guerrilla faction isolated in the peaks. No matter how many times United Mining eradicated them, they always seemed to rise again, just like their motto. Endless lumen light the way that the belt may rise again one day. So we're going to explore this wreck. Lumium coating, spare ship part, uh, some fuel and Pika starshine? I'm not sure what that is. Lumium coating. Temporarily coating a ship with refined lumium would greatly increase its resistance against attacks. During the war, the Ring Liberation Front had plenty of lumen, but were lacking military technology, so they'd apply coatings like this on their cobbled-together ships. Interesting. Spare ship part. After the war, abandoned ship parts left over from the battles became an important resource for revitalising Thousand Peaks. On some of the parts, you could even see the Ring Liberation Front's production label. And then Pika's Starshine. The alcohol of Thousand Peaks, unlike that of East Ocean, is pungent and strong, brimming with the smell of minerals and gunpowder. Kay always said that when I became the clan master, I had to give him some land for winemaking. Poor Kay. Oh. Do a ship upgrade. Let's pop over and have a look at that. Yeah, we've got a few things we can do here. So let's have a look at signal modifier. The Red Chamber's signal modifier is old enough to be in a museum. We need to bring it up to date. I think that help us do those rolls against the uh, bounty hunter ships, maybe? This looks like we can carry more uh, sc uh, scavenger kits or exploration kits. So this one's done. Oh, view parts. Uh, okay, don't don't get that. Oh, okay, they just. Uh, Okay, don't really get it, but there's two we can do, so I think we want to upgrade the, the signal thing anyway. There we go. So presumably that'll make our rolls a little bit easier now. There's more bits we could get, but let's go back for now. We might be able to explore this place again. I think we can, so let's, uh, let's do that. Spare ship part. A bit more fuel. And that moonshine stuff. I'll do one more. Oh, okay. Now we've we got it all. We got it all. Okay, so let's uh, let's head off them. Can we now go and check this out? Yeah. Okay. So there's a so there's a maximum range that we can scan stuff at apparently. But that's okay. So this is the Silk Oasis, the Black Market Bazaar. By the light of Ignis, Miria Everlasting. Whether you need a bionic prosthesis or illegal parts, the Silk Oasis is at your service. No docking fees required. Sounds good to me. We're getting an unknown communication request. Hmm. <laughs> like, uh, A 
bribe them. Or we have a very good chance of sending a good signal now that we used our we've upgraded our communications. What I remember, the communications officer seemed confused about his mistake, so they just decided to let us go. Excellent. Here we are. Never figured the first time I visited this infamous city would be to hold a space burial. But here we are. Let's check out the bar first. Legend has it that the Oni used to work in United Mining's Border Patrol. One day he got into an argument with one of his superiors and put him in the hospital. As a result, he was fired. Given his former position, he knew quite a few drifters, thieves and fugitives. After losing his job, his old friends helped him build this bar so he could make a few bucks. for flavour, he didn't actually offer us any jobs. Ignis's, sh <laughs> Ignis's shrine was the largest gathering place for followers of the Mirian religion. The crowd was full of peddlers and worshippers surrounding the main hall, turning it into a massive hub of commercial activity. The Ignis faith was mostly led by the Mirian Ignis guild, who hoped that people would honour the sun through business and good deeds. Due to its simple doctrine, it eventually became the mainstream religion in the post-war peaks. Money? Why not? What do we get? I have to say, Ada was a bit of an impulsive buyer. And we got an Ignis Astrolabe, which is on the back with the words, May Ignis shed light upon your good deeds. To thank Ignis for the light he provides, Peekers used to use this to offer up prayers in their homes. Since it looks like a Lumen Relic, it's commonly used to trick outsiders searching for valuable artifacts, but it's really not worth much. Oh well, we got, we got conned. The Mirian Ignis Guild was the largest religious and commercial organization in the asteroid belt, and was the largest smuggler of lumen goods as well. Most that arrived here came for no other reason than to sell off their ill-gotten items, but we had other reasons for coming. あいつの借金は彼が君らのことは君らが、これが道理。自分でどうぞ。あいつ。あんた三海人なら三海人を助けなさいよ。食流権限。我々は商人。三海人中和組だけで語られても。店先でそんなこと困りますな。縁起でもない。お願いします。会長、故郷に返してあげたいんです。大きな晴れ。見栄えが悪い。お願いします。ああ、もう君心の人間じゃないやろ。土下座なんぞの前に普通銭の話が先
ただなお尋ね者のお手伝いをするのはちょいと怖いやろだから条件を出させてもらうで手の上にあるもんわかこれな最近闇市で苦労して手に入れた流脈包囲なんやけど最近どこの探査車も予定表が真っ赤でなそれってつまり君ら探査できるんやって知らんけどならコピーをあげるさかいこの情報がほんまもんかどうか確かめるちゅうのが条件やそしたら完璧な宇宙層を見せたる Key directions Black Market Cave. If Kay knew that I got on my knees for him, he'd be so upset. But he just meant that much to me. Okay, I doubt we've got anything real to sell, really to sell. Okay, but we do. Oh, okay. Eight of these. We'll sell those for sure. Oops, I sold that other thing as well. I think we made a loss on it, and I don't think it was very valuable. See what he's got to buy. Usual stuff.、Uh, we'll top up the fuel. And we'll top up the exploration kits as well. So we have a new、uh, signal now that we're going to. First of all. Oh, okay. First of all, we've got a couple of、uh, messages. Uh, there's one from the、uh, news. Statement on illegal excavation. Due to the recent uptick in illegal excavation, United Mining has made an appeal to runners stating that in accordance with the Lumen Mining Act, anyone who discovers a cave may keep the legal rights to it so long as they pay 10% tax on the lumen. For cave related affairs, please report to the Lumen Association and do not attempt to sell stolen goods through illegal channels. Violator,、uh, violators can face a prison sentence of up to 20 years. Great Director Iron Wind, okay. And something here from Lamar. My dear runner friends, revered and respected runners, are you sick of all those artifacts piling up on your ship? Okay, this is just an ad, isn't it? Right. Ooh, ooh, okay, he's actually given us Marie and Ignis partnership.、Uh, so we can trade with them, which we've just done anyway.、Um, so I don't know. Maybe there's other locations that we can、uh, use as well. So we're going to analyze that、uh, coordinates we just got.、Yeah, somewhere up there. And it looks like it's going to be too far away for us to scan.、Uh, I suppose we could check it. Yeah, okay, she can only scan that fast. There's must so if we go to this abnormal signal that's on the way. This is a lumen cave. Yeah, alright, check it out. Mining expeditions and the flow of intel in Thousand Peaks was ten times that of East Ocean. Back then, I couldn't believe that there'd be any caves that hadn't been discovered. I'll have a little look. Even though United Mining had prohibited the possession of caves, law enforcement in the Astro Belt was much more relaxed and tended to turn a blind eye to such regulations. Given the massive demand for lumen, the Mirian Ignis Guild continued to develop a number of caves and sold the excavation rights to runners in such a way that it didn't violate their beliefs, which eventually turned into a burgeoning entertainment industry. <laughs> Is it a nightclub or something? Couple of exploration kits. I was wondering how much money it is, and actually, it's a really easy check. So let's、uh, see what we do here. I put a small amount of excav excavation equipment into their warehouse. The digital contract was sent to me, and we all agreed on how much we'd earn. That was life in this peaks, and to this day, I still haven't learned.、Uh, 
damaged lumen metal plates. Okay, a lumen metal plate created by fusing a small amount of lumen into steel. Its ability to block off lumium induced hallucinations made it a commonly seen material around the cave. Yeah, I was going to say we needed some of those to upgrade our ship, so let's uh, head back over to the upgrade screen and see what we can do. So what's this? Increase armor capacity. Yeah, so if we use our co lumen lumium coating and the damaged metal plates, uh, we can buy additional armor plates, I expect. So let's upgrade that. And we've gone up to 17. Okay. And actually, it uh, gives us the maximum having upgraded, which is pretty cool. I'd like to upgrade fuel at some point. What do we have to do to upgrade our fuel? We need oh, a few more damaged lumium plates and also a united mining reactor, or three of them. Okay. Um, well, I think we I think we leave here now. And oh, there's another one here. So let's try this one. Pirate radio, the crimson kettle. Pirate radio station, I think. Oh, we're heroes. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we're going to let people board, but why don't we uh, do a video interview? <laughs> as soon as we finished speaking, a hail of gunfire rained down on us, and it took all of Remy's skills to get us out of there. Uh, yeah, okay, we lost some armor plates. It was a trick. We've got to... Yeah, they do, seem to, they do seem to be tricks most of the time, don't they? So we ought to try and just get out of those. From what I remember, Ada tried to get a refund multiple times, but Remy would simply resubscribe <laughs> for another year. No one would have guessed that the most popular broadcasting program in the Thousand Peaks region came from this small, humble radio uh, space station. A small group of workers wrestled with faulty equipment in the chaotic space station, attempting to spread their cherished Thousand Peaks culture through entertainment. Is he talking to us or to Ada? She can do it. As soon as Raider saw the script, she walked away without saying a word, leaving the set in awkward silence. Apparently it was about an evil witch and how the people managed to drive her from the peaks. Oh, okay, so she didn't like that. Never mind. And now we should be close enough to analyse this signal here in our exploration zone. Uh, okay. Time to get low on fuel, but it did say that resupply was available here. <laughs> Is he drunk? Um, let's uh, let's we can we can talk to him. It's quite a low check. Ada spoke highly of the other ship, and the barkeep was ecstatic. Soon after, a container was seen heading for Red Chamber. He said he regularly traded with Fortuna Entertainment, and that this was one of their better products. Ooh, what have we got? What have we got? Fortuna Pipe times four. Fortuna Entertainment was probably the most well-known entertainment entity around. Their main operation was dealing lumen herbs, and they had small factories scattered around the belt. Tao Yuan was nothing more than a side business. I've heard that smoking a stick of their lumen herbs increases vitality and is a cure-all for a range of illnesses. There you go. Outlaw City, Tao Yun. I remember the disdainful look on their faces when I told Ada and Remy that I wanted to dock here. <laughs> Some memories are best not spoken. Okay. Let's go to the guild. The destructive effects of the Lumen War left the asteroid belt in lawless shambles, prompting United Mining to give up any hope of establishing order. 
The illicit trade that flowed through these sites turned them into hotbeds for underground factions and an active territory for the Mirian Ignis Guild. It's rumored that they would provide services to United Mining officials and use that money to invest in the resistance. That was Thousand Peaks for you. We got much to sell. We got these pipes. How many got four of those? Uh, yeah, we'll sell those. Does he have anything to buy? We definitely want fuel. Oh, what's this on the right? This is Lumen Ginseng. In Thousand Peaks, Lumen plants are commonly traded that have a wide range of medical and biochemical uses. Interesting. I wonder if you can sell those for more than you buy them for somewhere else. I might buy one and just test that theory. Let's fill up some fuel. Uh, we'll fill up an armor plates as well. Uh, we'll get a couple more exploration kits and then we're going to buy this thing. A common luma plant hidden within the depths of caves. It's used to increase blood circulation. So I'm not sure why it's so expensive. Look it up yourself. Ada seemed reluctant to explain why. <laughs> I think I get what that is. There we go. We bought... Ooh, did we buy? I bought two, actually. Um, I didn't realise that it had um, already bought the one. Okay. Hopefully, So we bought that for 350 and we're going to see if we can go somewhere else and sell it for more. Uh, but in the meantime, we're leaving here. I thought this was where we were heading, but there must be... Oh, Rezo Scanner. V. Let's press V. Alright, so... Um well, this one looks the brightest, so what do I do? Do I press V again, is it? Or is it C? The Murky Witch's Star Song. The recording was murky, like a flurry of mixed emotions. It made me think of the Silk Oasis, where the surrounding areas were full of pirates and middlemen traders. It was almost like the stories of space came alive when Ada sang. Okay, so we're going to head up to here, Primordial Cave. Okay, so it's saved here, so um, we'll leave it there for now, as it's uh, around the usual sort of length I do these episodes. Um, and we're here at this asteroid, 339 Lumen Cave, where we're going to be trying to bury Kay uh, next time. But thanks for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, then please do hit the like button on the video. Uh, perhaps consider subscribing to the channel as well, which would be amazing. And in the meantime, I hope to see you next time for more Opus Echo of Starsong. Bye for now.